this is Sharon here. Today I am going to do a video about Pattern Keeper and some of the changes that have just been released. So uh, today is the 17th of September and a new beta release was uh, pushed out yesterday. So just in case you aren't aware, it's pushed out in small batches just in case there are issues. So if you haven't received it yet, um, please hold fire. You can check your Google Play Store occasionally, but uh, it isn't pushed out to everyone at the same time. So I thought I would go through uh, what some of the new changes are so that people can get a feel, maybe get a, a preview if they haven't already got the uh, update. So a lot of the changes are options that the user can go through and select for themselves. There's a lot of configuration changes. There's also some bug fixes and stability changes. Um, and also there's been some uh, translation done into some languages. I'm not sure which languages have been translated, uh, but I would expect that to be dependent on the language that you've got set on the device. So let's have a look <coughs> in the config in the settings and we will just work our way down through the various options that we have available. So the first one that we see here is this general option here for the theme and what Pattern Keeper has done is now enabled dark mode, particularly good for those of you who have OLED devices because it uh, reduces the risk of screen burn um, when you've got very bright colours on the screen or white on the screen, you get the risk of burn. So to be able to change this, literally all you need to do is tap on it and change between light and dark. And if I go back to the chart, what you'll see now is the entire frame is black and effectively the uh, chart has been inverted. So it's white symbols on a black background. Let's go back. I'm just going to change that back to light, which is my preference. So your translucent colours is an existing setting that hasn't changed. But underneath now, what we have is the option to be able to uh, have my completed stitches in a flat colour. So what this means is that rather than having each of your completed stitches done in the colour of the floss that's been assigned to the symbol, I can just have it all in, in one colour. And I can choose what colour that will be. So let's just choose green for the sake of this. And I've switched it on. So if we go back, what we can see now is that the page that I've marked as complete is now just that flat green colour. And if I go back into the settings and turn that off, it will now go back to the DMC floss colours. The next option that has been added that is new is this show the search highlight on finished stitches. So if I go back here and I search for this symbol, okay, so this is the Z symbol, you can see that on these completed stitches, I can also see this pink highlight. If I go in here and I turn this off and then go back, what you'll see is you've got the pink highlight now for the stitches that haven't been completed. But for the ones that have been completed, they are just showing as the DMC colour and you're not getting the search highlight as well. I personally like to have that highlight on because it helps me um, to keep an eye on where I am in my stitching process. Um, but, you know, some people, I'm sure, will prefer to not see them at all. So I'm just going to switch that one back on for me. The next one that's new is the selection colour. So if I go back again into here, when I am selecting, as you can see, I've got purple surround on these selected stitches. What I can do now is I can, can configure which is my preferred colour for this. So let's go here and let's make it bright yellow. Why not? So if I come back out of my settings, what you'll see now is those selected stitches Instead of having the purple border, it now has a bright yellow border. So let's carry on down to have a look now. So we've always had the option to be able to configure whether we want to see our page breaks on or off. 
Now, previously, they were solid black and looked a lot like a grid line, and they did cause some confusion, and a lot of people did switch them off. They've now changed, and if I just come back out again and scroll down a little bit to make them easier to see. So instead of being a solid line, they're now a dotted line. And by default, they are a, a fairly bright orange colour. But you can actually change your preferred colour for this. So we can see there's a page break colour. And again, if I uh, come in to select a colour and I go back out, I can now see that my page lines are this uh, nice turquoisey blue colour. And as usual, you can switch them off if that's your preference. So if we carry on down, we now have the centre mark. So the centre mark is a new feature. If I just come back to the chart and I will uh, scroll out a bit just so we can see a little easier. I'm going to navigate my way around so we can see up here in the top of the screen, I've got an arrow pointing downwards towards the centre of my chart. And if I scroll, we can see if we scroll downwards, we can see that on the left here where it says 20, I've also got the horizontal. So if I go across these on my vertical and on my horizontal, I can see there's a dot now which is showing the centre of the stitching area. If I go back into the settings and we go down, so there are a few settings for it. So the first is whether I want to show the centre of the stitched area, which is the default, or the centre of the grid. Um, and the reason for those two settings is that obviously for a non-full coverage chart or for a chart that um, has blank spaces around the edges like a gecko rouge chart, the centre of the stitched area and the centre of the grid may not be the same. Um, now, if you are using this on a scan or a chart that isn't supported and you've had to grid yourself, it will show the centre of the grid because it doesn't know the stitched area. Um, or, of course, you can turn it off. Diagonal lines is a feature that has already existed for a while, so we won't go into that. So the next one is around what time your stitching resets, the, the count that you see on the left hand side. Now for um, I think at least a year now, the default has been four in the morning. And that was because there was feedback that a lot of people were stitching after midnight and they wanted to see um, for that stitching session um, uh, how many stitches they'd completed. But a lot of people also fed back that they preferred midnight to them, it was more logical. So now there is a choice as to um, when those stitch counts will reset. I prefer midnight personally, but in all honesty for me, I don't stitch at midnight or at four in the morning, so it's kind of irrelevant, but I know people are late night stitchers and they have a preference. There was also feedback that some people were completely uninterested in seeing their progress. So if I just come back into the chart, the progress is this here, how much you stitch in a day and how much in total you've stitched. So you can now choose whether you want to see these or not. So if I turn them both off and come back, what you'll see now is that it's a clean view. There's no progress. There's no totals. Um, I, you know, and for people who don't want to see that, they're just focusing on the chart and not on the numbers. Some people are very interested in it. I quite like uh, seeing the numbers go up because I don't stitch by page or anything else as a marker. I like to see that I'm progressing in 5% or 10% dependent on the size of the chart. So I will turn those back on. Um, shortcuts have already existed, so uh, there's nothing new there. So. This is uh, some of the key features that have been added for this release. There has also been some improvements to support Stitch Fiddle and a few other designers. And like I said, there's been some bug fixes and some stability fixes. For more information, you can look on the Pattern Keeper web, uh, 
um, Facebook page, not website. I'm sure it will be on the website as well at some point if it isn't already. Um, but there is lots of information and Path and Keeper obviously publishes on there when they do their updates. So I hope you found this useful um, and I hope you enjoy the new features when they are pushed out to your device or when it's updated. So until then, um, stay safe, happy stitching and I'll speak to you soon.